Today I'm going to answer a question by a student who goes by the name of Robert F. Little. And his question is about Thevenin's theorem. And the question is basically, can Thevenin's theorem be used when capacitors and inductors are involved? And the quick answer is absolutely. So let's take a quick review and see how that's done. So the idea is that if I have a battery and a resistor in series, and a little more than that because Thevenin's theorem says that any circuit will act like this. No matter how complicated it is, I can reduce that circuit to acting like a single battery and a single resistor in series. And how do I figure out what they are? I can calculate them if I know what they are, but what we're really going to do is first find out what the open circuit voltage is. So I'm going to put a voltmeter here. And whatever that voltage reads, what's that going to tell me about the circuit? It's open circuit. Remember, your voltmeter takes almost no current, so there's virtually no current going through the resistor. If there's no current going through the resistor, we're not going to have a voltage difference between one side and the other. So if there's current running through the resistor, of course, I get a higher voltage where the current goes in and a lower voltage where it comes out, giving me a voltage difference. But if there's no current, there's no voltage difference. There's no current. So whatever voltage is here is the voltage there. So the voltage I read here is my battery voltage. So let's say that reads 10 volts. I just found out that that is a 10 volt battery, regardless of what that resistor is. Now, what I do is I replace that voltmeter with a current meter and read what the short circuit current is. And let's say that says I have one amp of current. Now, a current meter is typically a short circuit, has very, very low resistance. So it's going to tell us that I have with 10 volts, I'm going to get one amp. So what's the resistance here? Well, if you know your voltage, you divide into it. So one goes into 10, 10 times. So that means I have a 10 ohm resistor. So I just figured out what that was by just using a voltmeter and a current meter told me I have a 10 volt battery and a 10 ohm resistor. And I can do that with any circuit, no matter how complicated it is, it will act as if it is a single voltage source and a single series resistance. And then again, the question is, will that work with inductors and capacitors involved? Well, of course, not with direct current, because if that's a capacitor, it simply blocks the current. And if it's an inductor and direct current, it has almost no effect. It just has a little bit of resistance. So we're talking about alternating current. So let's first, we're not going to call that a resistance now because it's going to be a combination of inductance and capacitance and resistance or impedance. So what we have is an unknown impedance. I'm just going to draw that as a little block with a Z in it. How do we figure out what that impedance is? We're going to put a voltmeter across here. But this time, of course, that is an AC voltmeter. That which means also we're going to eliminate that battery and replace it with some kind of an AC voltage source. So now I put my AC voltmeter there and let's say I get 10 volts AC, RMS. That means I have a 10 volt AC source. Now if I replace that with an AC current meter and let's say I get one amp. What's that tell me? That tells me that my impedance, one amp goes into 10 volts 10 times. That means I have 10 ohms of impedance now. Now, of course, that's going to depend on my frequency. I change my frequency, everything's going to change. So we're going to get a Thevenin impedance instead of a Thevenin resistance, but it does work for alternating current. And this is exactly what we do when you talk about output impedance of a circuit. We are talking about the Thevenin equivalent impedance. And we're going to, of course, test that at a certain frequency. So if this was a real world, let's say it was audio circuit, I would be running that at one kilohertz. And that's the frequency I would test it at and see what voltage and what current do I get at that frequency. Now, if I want to know more about it, it can get more complicated. I might try it at different frequencies. And I will find that my impedance is different at different frequencies. So typically for audio frequencies, we would test it at one kilohertz and that would tell us what our output impedance is for that particular circuit. So when it comes to circuits where we talk about output impedance, we're talking about the Thevenin equivalent impedance of that circuit. And Thevenin's theorem is what governs that. 
So the answer is yes, it does work with inductors and capacitors. It just it means that we're working with alternating current, which means we're going to have a alternating current source. A frequency is going to be involved, which means that changes with frequency, but we test it the same way with a AC voltmeter, then an AC current meter, and come up with the same result, but now that's impedance rather than just simply resistance. So I hope that answered your question. If not, please ask again, and uh, please keep those questions coming. I answer as many as I have time for, and if I don't answer them, sometimes other people do. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.